whenever you've got your Natiza system and you've created your distribution key, it's going to create a table header on every spool. As soon as you hit create the table, here's my distribution key, my data types and my columns, and you look around, every single spool goes, I own that table. Matter of fact, they don't care about anybody else. Each spool goes, yeah, I've been in charge of this table because the table header is there. So you'll never see a situation where one spoo has seven tables and another spoo has six. They have the same tables. They'll just hold different rows of those tables. What did one spoo say to the other? Hey, good looking, because they look exactly the same from a table perspective. It's always that way. That's the way Natiza is designed. Every table is designed to be spread across all the spoos. Let's say we start with a system that's got 100 spoos. It's spread across all of those spoos. Maybe we add more spoos. Now the system's grown. We've got 200 spoos. That data is redistributed across all 200 spoos. And that's the way parallel processing systems of a world-class nature are always designed. This is what I want you to see visually. I've got two tables across my three spoo system. And as you can see, each spoo goes, yeah, I own that table. And the rows are spread across all of them. They never spread the data going, well, how does this table relate to this table? They don't really do it that way. They go, look, we're spreading the first table, which is the order table. What's the distribution key? Do the math. <laughs> data's out there spread. Secondly, let's get the next table. Is the customer table? Well, what's the distribution key? Well, customer number? Spread the data based on that hash. And that's the way it always works. Each spoo holds a portion of every table. The table header and the data blocks are separated. They're not stored together because think about it. You got one table header for each spoo for a particular table. And then there could be many extents. You know, Natiza holds tables that have a billion rows in it. Sometimes spoos go, yeah, I've got like 25 million rows myself. So there's an enormous amount of storage in the separate extents, but Natiza knows what it's got, how to gather it up, and how to process it fast. Right now, I just need you to know that the actual table definition and the data blocks are stored there on their spoos, but totally separated. Here's a great picture to really bring this home. We've got our spoo, we've got our data block, we call it an extent, and of course we've got our table header. We're ready to process. When a table is going to be processed because the user's querying that, they're going to bring the extent and the data block into memory. Until they do that, they just know nothing about anything down there, okay? And they're going to put the table header out there too. That's going to happen in memory. If there's any processing done, it's never done on the disk. It's got to be inside memory. So understand that block movement is a necessity unless they just move the FPGA information in the zone map then they can tell if they even need to move that block. And if the answer is yes, it moves into memory where lightning strikes and the system processes it. This is designed to give you an idea of exactly what a full table scan is going to do. Each spoo is going to simultaneously bring its extent or extents inside the memory where it's going to be processed one row at a time. That's because it's a sequential search on a full table scan. And you can see that each spoo processes its information one time. And that's the definition of a full table scan. All spoos processing all rows of a particular table. Since the beginning of computer systems, they've always brought the data block into memory where they process it. That is the Achilles heel of every major computer system out there. That's why some systems go, I can't even process this mass amount of data in this query. It just never comes back. But that's really where Natiza saw what everybody else had done in the past and came up with a concept that said, we're going to come up with an FPGA card 
and zone maps on each one of these blocks. If we don't have to, we won't bring in every block into memory to be analyzed because that is the Achilles heel of every system out there. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need a query tool that makes joins easy? The Nexus has a join builder that turns the most complex joins into child's play. The Nexus Query Chameleon, making connections easy again. Visit coughingdw.com for more information.